Welcome. The expectation effect, what the hell even is it? Well, it's because if you've seen my video last week, I talked about some of the BS that we've been fed in the fitness industry where it's taken stuff and tried to make it their own when the reality is it's been around for donkey's ages. The expectation effect is a new phrase that I heard of only recently that I suppose coins what people expect to believe in the BS. Now where this comes from is actually a book I think called The Expectation Effect, don't get me wrong, just Google it and find out. But basically it was a study in where they brought some people in within the book and they talked about gluten. Now, you and I would believe based upon the masses out there that gluten is bad for you. It is bad for everybody. The reality is it's only bad for a certain group of individuals. The rest of us can pretty much deal with it. And as you know, if you know someone who has a gluten intolerance, such as someone who has celiac disease, then you'll find that gluten causes all sorts of things from mild bloating to gas to diarrhea to even hives on the skin. Now where am I going? What's this expectation effect all about? Well, pretty much it was to prove a point. It was to prove that if people were told a certain thing, then they would expect a certain thing to happen. And that's what they did. So they pulled all these people in to do a bit of a test. It was to do with gluten. And they simply said to them, eat this meal. They all did. And then they then said to them, oh, by the way, that contained gluten. That's all they said. That is it. Now, they watched these people over the course of a period of time afterwards. And slowly, one by one, from the ones who had really severe celiac disease to the people who didn't have any gluten intolerance. And how did they know? Because they did a test on them properly beforehand to determine that. But yet each one of them had this expectation that it was going to cause some distress. So one by one, they went off. They had severe bloating, they had gas, a lot of them made it to the toilet, some even induced vomiting because of it was expected. Now, this is a clear example of what I'm seeing more and more and why I'm probably just, it's, I've had enough, it's time for me to sort of call two cents, two cents, a spade, a spade, etc. There is a lot of BS in this industry about what you should and shouldn't do. There's a lot of BS about what things will do to you or not do to you. We're seeing it between, particularly in diet cultures, the vegans versus the carnivores is the clearly obvious one. And whilst I have my own gripe about certain individuals telling people that they're gonna survive on 800 calories a day, see the last video, the reality is this. You and I are individuals. You and I are both very different. I eat a pizza from a certain place, I fart like a trooper, I shit like Mr. Whippy, and I get bloating. I have a homemade pizza at home because I know I'm controlling the variables, no problems. Goes down fine, doesn't come back up, goes out the other end, equally as fine. The reality is it works for me, it may not work for you. So rather than you listening to the bullshit and the backed by science, as I said, that's now backed by bullshit, simply I want you to test it for yourself. So if you think you've got a gluten intolerance, go get tested. It may not be a gluten intolerance. It may be something else in the food that you're consuming. And if you're like 80 to 90% of the population that we have on this green earth, you're probably like the 80 to 90%. You're eating highly processed, highly palatable foods that are not grown in the ground, made by cows and animals, but they're pretty much they're a freaking science experiment. I think as I get a bit older, I'm going back to basics. If I can't kill it, if I can't pull it out the ground, and I can't cook it properly, should I even bloody well eat it? Two cents, what's your expectation?